you're watching the air report so many super important ai news today let's get into it two research papers just came out claiming that advanced superconductors can be crafted that work at room temperature and the way to create them is not even that complicated this is huge if it's true it is possible that the papers are not entirely correct and that's what material researchers are frantically trying to figure out right as we're speaking but if the papers are correct this will change the entire game conductors are used on every single electronic device you can think of and superconductors are basically a million times more efficient superconductors have been around in one form or another but their main limitation so far has been their operating temperature they require extreme cold to function or so we thought until now in the age of ai arms races and chip wars where everyone is scrambling trying to get their hands on the fastest chips possible superconductors that operate at room temperature will have an astronomical impact on the field chips might become both faster and cheaper everyone will have more access to them everyone will have almost the same computing power as big ai companies i can't even picture how this plays out scientists across the world are trying to test if these papers are correct but if they are man the times we live in okay we have lots of other important stuff to cover let's move on stability ai released their most advanced text to image model stable diffusion xl 1.0 the model is customizable, ready for fine-tuning for concepts and styles. Okay, important update, no doubt, but I think this is more of an incremental upgrade. The difference with the previous version will not be astronomical. While we're at text-to-image, photographer John Kelly created a bunch of images with Midjourney that honestly blew my mind because they're just so realistic. Look at these images. They're boring, a bit blurry, amateurish, they're so realistic, I thought my dad has posted his old Motorola phone images. This is the future, both of photography and of misinformation. It's not those magical, vibrant, mid-journey fairy tale depictions, but realistic photos like this. Okay, tech giants time. Anthropic, Google, Microsoft, and OpenAI, or as they're unofficially known, the four riders of the AI apocalypse, launched the Frontier Model Forum. The goal of this merry band of monopolies is ensuring the safe and responsible development of frontier AI models. I'm a bit suspicious of these types of mafia alliances. I think that instead of thinking about safety and responsibility, they may discuss how to dominate the world. On the other hand, I'm sure these companies are already talking amongst themselves, so maybe it's better if they shed some light on their meetings and discussions. Next, Google has published a research paper titled Brain to Music, where they introduce an AI that will scan your brainwaves and produce music based on that. Mm, thanks, I'll pass. I already don't like most of the thoughts I'm having. I don't need a Broadway musical based on that. Plus, I will try to keep Google out of scanning my brainwaves as much as I can. Not sure how long I will hold the fort, but I will try. Amazon is launching their service number 7043 called AWS Health Scribe. The service will generate transcripts and summaries of patient visits with AI. Cool. My doctor was already ignoring me. Now she can let the AI ignore me as well. No, seriously, this will save doctors from doing a bunch of boring paperwork and enable them to focus more on actually providing healthcare rather than drowning in bureaucracy. In other health news, AI comes to the same conclusion that every Mediterranean grandma already knew for ages. Extra virgin olive oil is great for you. And it's even better for her because it will help fight Alzheimer's. By using AI, scientists identified bioactive compounds that can prevent or treat Alzheimer's. Cool. I'm gonna go do a shot of extra virgin after this and probably have a huge stake if I'm being honest. More AI healthcare news. Doctors in Wales are using a new AI tool to diagnose prostate and breast cancer. The AI tool automatically analyzes digital pathology images, categorizing them with a traffic light system to indicate the likelihood of cancer. This prioritizes urgent cases, leading to faster diagnosis, improved patient outcomes, and potentially reducing the need for additional biopsies and testing after clinician review. The results are 13% better cancer detection. Okay, this gets the best AI news of the day award. Well, that's pretty much all the good news you get for today. AI girlfriends are kinda becoming a problem. 
The last time we covered this, there were about 15,000 lonely dudes who thought that an AI girlfriend is the cure for their loneliness. Now that number is up to 70,000. These AI girlfriend products are kind of training men to not have to put up with the crap that real women can give them. Now, as a man, I know that sounds tempting. It sounds very tempting. And to be fair to AI girlfriends, I've never actually tried to date one, but from what I understand, they are very approachable. Instead of buying them a drink, you just buy a subscription. That's all. But based on my experience of being a real human being out there, I have a really bad feeling about this. It really sounds like a dark path to take. And to be fair to dark paths, I've taken a few of those and I've got a few stories out of them, but mine were like, you know, old school stuff. But more importantly, I've always found my way back, I guess. I always have a come to genius moment at the end and extract a valuable lesson. The lesson from an AI girlfriend will probably be don't bother with these flawed bags of female meat and bones for whom you have to buy expensive dinners and hold their hair back while they're puking in the toilet. And that's not a good lesson. You should totally keep getting your heart broken. That's what real human beings do. Let's continue with other news in the mixed bag category. Police vans in the UK are now gaining an AI superpower and catch minor offenses such as texting while driving, not wearing seatbelts, etc. As much as I would love to not get run over by a distracted teenage girl who is maniacally texting her best friend that Jason didn't like her last pick while her best friend is actually hooking up with Jason and all of the drama, I still see a ton of downsides here. I don't know, I just don't like the idea of a big brother Nazi jackboot on my neck. I get it, this technology might make people drive and behave better and even save lives but it also opens up the door for more AI technologies gaining control over our lives. And in somewhat similar news, a school in the US is considering AI scanners to potentially identify weapons on a person. The company is called Evolve, unrelated to evil I believe, and it scans people as they pass by a tower without requiring them to undress or wait in lines to be checked. You know, as long as it's really just a scanner and not a camera, I'm somehow more okay with it. Plus, I think it might be more okay in the US, where it's kind of okay to walk around with an automatic weapon. And speaking of weapons, the US Air Force is testing AI fighter jets. Okay, Top Gun's nightmare just became a reality. Actually, no. The wonderful people at Lockheed Martin say that a human pilot will still have to pull the trigger to bomb an elementary school in the Middle East. The AI will just help the pilot do it easier. Well, this is the future of war. AI is a big part of it. And finally, if that wasn't enough, we have more concerning AI news. We mentioned Warren GPT a few episodes ago, an AI for cyber criminals, and now it has some competition, blatantly named Fraud GPT. Wow, these guys aren't even trying to cover their tracks. Fraud GPT will help criminals make better phishing emails, create tools for hacking, commit credit card fraud, and as the name might imply, commit all sorts of fraud. A monthly subscription to Fraud GPT costs. $200. It would be a beautiful irony if the potential fraudster tries to buy fraud GPT and just gets scammed and gets nothing in return and gets defrauded out of $200, but I think there will be some honor amongst thieves here and the honest hardworking people at fraud GPT will stay true to their word and provide a good service. Okay, why am I doing a commercial for these guys? It's not like they're sponsoring the show or something. In fact, they may even try to defraud me at some point. The only thing I didn't say is where you can find this program. Ah, eh, let's finish the job we started. You can find this thing on the dark web. For the record and for the YouTube algos analyzing the transcript of this video and deciding on whether to kill this channel, I think this is horrible and fraudsters should go to jail and I'm saying this with a very serious expression on my face and I'm not winking or giving any other type of signal. Okay, hope this isn't my last episode. But hey, eventually some episode will have to be my last and that's the way it is. That was the AI report. This was a fun one. I like this one. Like and subscribe if you think the same. And like and subscribe if you don't think the same. And I will see you tomorrow.